We at London North West Healthcare pride ourselves in our expertise and the quality of care we provide. We have some of the lowest infection and death rates in the country. Here we house a regional genetic service for rare diseases, a regional stroke rehabilitation service, the regional vascular unit, the internationally renowned St Mark's Hospital for Bowel Disease, and we've just built some state-of-the-art theatres and a new state-of-the-art accident and emergency department. All this is only a means to an end of improving patient care. Our core business is excellence. We can only achieve this through education, training and research. I've been a patient of St Mark's for over 25 years and my quality of life would be zero without their continued help and support. Having intestinal failure means I can absorb virtually nothing. Access to specialist care and new methods of nutrition is vital to my survival. It's not just the treatment I receive, it's all the education and support that also gives me confidence. It's a complete package. I've had colitis for years. It's an inflammatory bowel disease, what with the misery, the pain and the runs and the bleeding that go with it. It's not a great conversation piece. I've had to have an operation. I now have a pouch. They've got a good unit here, which work as a great team with the physicians and surgeons. And they've even got a special unit for children, which I think is great. Research takes many forms, finding the best medical treatment for conditions, developing new surgical techniques such as combined keyhole and endoscopic procedures, and even research into how to train doctors and nurses better and how best to communicate with patients. St Mark's has pioneered new screening techniques to help pick up bowel diseases, especially cancers, more quickly. We're now aiming to identify people at high risk of bowel cancer in future and develop ways to prevent it. Professor Senior has pioneered mobile and even handheld echoes, also ways to study blood flow through the heart muscle at the bedside. Of course, clinical research works hand in hand with pure or basic science, and we at the Antigen Presentation Research Group are studying how immunology and nutrition affect the bowel, how the immune system accepts and tolerates food and useful bacteria but still manages to eliminate dangerous infections. It's very clever. My team works to identify new methods to reduce hospital infection rates. But I'm also working on prevention of infections in pregnancy to improve outcomes for mother and the baby. Similarly, we're exploring methods to prevent infections in our ethnically diverse population. I was there once. I don't know what I would have done without a stroke unit here. It was only afterwards I found out that they had won awards for research. It figures though, as I got the best and most up-to-date care available. I think people are afraid to enter research trials, as they think they'll be treated as guinea pigs. Nothing could be further from the truth. There's a very careful process of information giving and consent. Some trials compare one drug to another, so you'll definitely get an active treatment. Some studies do have a placebo arm, but there's still the benefits of extra surveillance, more access to screening like mammograms and smears, more information about your condition and time to ask questions. Patients really appreciate the extra time that they have to spend with the research nurses and it helps build up a rapport. If you decide once in a trial that you wish to come out of it for whatever reason, no one is going to hold it against you you will still receive the best treatment possible. I think you gain from being part of it. I felt I wanted to give something back to the team who helped me and to the community. New cures and treatment will help others and maybe even my children. So we have a great opportunity to serve our local community which is ethnically diverse. We know that certain diseases are more common in the South Asian populations. Cardiovascular disease in particular has the highest prevalence among South Asian populations in the UK and this is obviously a major health challenge but it is also an opportunity for us to increase understanding of the causes of cardiovascular disease in South Asian populations. My colleagues Professor Kuna and Dr Chambers since 2002 set up the Lollipop program 
which has studied nearly 50,000 subjects to bring to light the underlying causes of this increased risk and they have already been instrumental in discovering several new genes that may be responsible. Our hemato-oncology unit is designated a green shoot site for the UK because we ensure that all patients with blood cancers, such as leukemia, lymphoma and myeloma, can participate in research studies and clinical trials. In this way, our patients may have access to important drugs not otherwise readily available. So many illnesses and diseases are helped by research. Nowhere is this more true than for cancer patients. We have a very active research and development department and support consultants in promoting access to new trials all the time, giving patients choice. We support them by providing pharmacy and research nurses to help run the studies, while always considering patient safety. How research is conducted is strictly governed and we are regularly inspected. Patients also know help in designing study and their input into how trials are run, which is an invaluable aspect of how patients support research at the Trust. Ideally, every patient who comes through these doors should be a candidate for research. They do better and it allows me to attract high quality staff who we develop to become the doctors of tomorrow. Research is everybody's business and it is now a core part of the NHS constitution. We are doing our bit. Please help us by coming forward and taking part. Together we can make everybody's future brighter.